Fire and water are in constant conflict, one always trying to overcome the other. But when there's a stalemate, a deadlock, it can create something magical. A half million years ago, this battle gave birth to Hawaii Island and a fishery like no other on the planet. If you've been to Maui or Honolulu and think you know what Kona looks like, think again. The Big Island has its own DNA. The youngest island in the Hawaiian chain, Hawaii Island is a baby at 500,000 years young. Featuring both tundra and tropical, it has eight of the world's 13 climate zones. Unlike other U.S. fisheries, Kona is beyond federal rules and regulations. It manages its own. Here, you don't have to buy fishing licenses. We have to have captain's licenses to run charters out here. But as far as the recreational fishermen or even commercial fishing, selling fish, catching fish to sell for your families, there's no regulations on the sizes of fish we can or cannot catch. We like to release a lot of our billfish because we want to sustain the bill fishery and conserve the population. We're not just fishing off any boat, we're fishing off the humdinger, as storied a sport fish as there is. A 1958 37 Rybovich, based in Kalua Kona. It has hosted celebrities, the world's top anglers, and everyday people alike for 45 years. We've done well in some tournaments. We've won the Hawaiian International Billfish Tournament more than anybody else. And uh, we seem to do better in prestige tournaments where you win a koa bull than if you win a big sack full of money, which doesn't please Brett and Chris real much, but uh, we fished with some of the best of them and we're pretty darn competitive. Recently, Jeff brought his son Brett into the family business. At first, I just used to hang around the harbor. I used to learn how to rig lures, tie knots, wash the boats, kind of work my way up. And just little by little, started doing the summers on my own when I was in out of school. It's something I just loved and just never got old. It's always tough working with your dad, but it's something that I'm glad that I can keep going for him. I love it just like he does. I've always been really good friends with Brett. Brett's helped me out a lot throughout my life, just little things, giving me rides to school and, and this and that. As a go-hard young kid, I really always just wanted to work on a boat that was designed for catching big fish quick, really fast. You can't do that on every boat here. Next, we take a deeper look at Kona and Hawaii Island and the force of nature that shaped its past and will reshape its future.
along the coast of Kona, a blanket of smooth, rippling lava. Pohoehoe, the Hawaiians call it. Mauna Kea, the volcano that rises 13,800 feet above sea level. At the base, it's a comfy 72 degrees. At the summit, it's below freezing. At Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, Kilauea hisses steam. It last erupted in May 2018, kicking off a three-month lava flow that leveled more than 700 homes. It's currently dormant, but for how long? Pele, the Hawaiian god of fire, was unreachable for comment. Lava created Hawaii Island. It's also what makes Kona unique among fishing destinations worldwide. For most places on Earth, deep water means long runs, which can mean long runs, 30, 60, 70, 100 miles into the blue to spots where the ocean and horizon become one. But not Kona. It's a fishery forged by fire. The lava created an island that is as steep below sea level as it is above. The ocean floor drops to 6,000 feet in just a couple of miles. The humdinger starts fishing just beyond the marina. Fishing in Kona is a lot easier on your body than it is a lot of other places because we don't have to go far and we don't have to run long distances and generally the seas are pretty darn calm and nice. One of the benefits of this geological phenomenon is that bottom fishing is within arm's reach of shore. There are little Snickers bars for the fish. Well, when bottom fishing, usually we'll go in the morning to catch our little base with these little mackerels, we call them opelus in Hawaiian. We'll catch everything on them from snappers to amberjacks to tunas to marlin to mai mai's, onos. It's kind of just a wide variety of bait. When we're catching those amberjacks, they got their own nickname. We call them sea donkeys, and there's a reason for it. They are really tough. You can catch them in some of the deepest water. This is when we put charters through everything. <laughs> yeah! Once you hook them down there, they're gonna fight you the whole way up, take multiple runs. It's, it's brutal trying to bring them up from the bottom. You'll figure out different ways trying to turn and hold the rod. One arm gets weak, the other one gets weak. Don't know where it's a soft spot, one spot hurts. No, they definitely will push you to the limits. Okay, I got a deep color. It's coming. Here we go, big AJ. Feel the burn. Nice one. Enough with the sea donkeys. Put out the spread and let's find the big billfish Kona is famous for.
we're really lucky that we're from Hawaii, born and raised, both me and Brett. His dad's been here since he was 18 years old. Knowing your water, that's our backyard out there. It's not like we just came here and like, figuring it out. It's, this is generations coming from my father too and, and my grandfather and learning and reading and taking what nature gives us. Kona offers a mixed bag, yellowfin tuna, wahoo, spearfish, blue marlin, and on this occasion, striped marlin. It's January when stripies show up in solid numbers. If we're trying to fish for stripies, we'll just drag hookless lures like soft heads. Soft heads are great teasers. You know, we'll fire them out ballyhoos or strip bait, you know, belly bait, something like that. targeting a large blue marlin. Most of the time, we're dragging artificial lures. It's not necessarily using larger lures. You can have the smallest lure out there and the biggest fish that grab the thing. But we like to have some decent tackle. If we're just going for big, we, we like to fish 130 pound tackle. Kona and the whole of Hawaii is a year round blue marlin destination. The largest marlin ever caught on hook and line was an 1,800 five-pounder landed off the island of Oahu in 1970. While six hours in the fighting chair sounds fun, blues this size are fine by us. Take it live. There you go. Yeah. Kai Ruckus does it again. Come on. There you go. Nice fat girl. Remember, right up, right up here in the top. Yeah, right in the blue part. Underneath that, yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah, boys. Yeah, <laughs> nice job, man. Nice job. Let's go get another one. One more day out into the blue. And one more blue. When you're in the fighting chair, bill fishing gives your aorta a proper workout. But trolling is slow and steady. 
the boat rocking with the swells, the persistent moan of the diesel engine. It's the big game angler's lullaby. You can go out and you can go trolling for marlin. You know, it's, it's real relaxing and, and mellow and people tend to forget like what can potentially happen when the fish bites, but it goes from the most calm, just relaxing fishing to the most exciting fishing. When one of those marlin bites, one of those artificial lures right behind the boat and you see the whole thing, it's, it's all surface. It's all just visual, like we're looking, we're hunting the whole time. We're, we're not just looking at the fish finder or we're not looking down, we're actually pursuing these fish. Feet of water right here. Okay, we're back at the mark. Yeah. Getting close. Yeah, deep color. Color. See it. Look at that fish. That's gorgeous. Get in there with the tag stick. You do. You do it. Get around here. Go right there, under the dorsal fin. A quick tag before the release. Good. Perfect. Good job. Nice job. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, yeah boys. Yeah. At a conservative estimate, the humdinger has logged 10,000 days on the water over the past 45 years. That's tens of thousands of miles trolled and too many fish to count. I'm getting a little old now, so I've outlived some of my customers, but uh, we're working on getting Brett some, some new ones. and. Uh, we fish a lot of days every year, which is great because we like fishing. We don't like being on shore. Now it's time for Brett to chase his 10,000 days. Uh, I've been pretty much born and raised on this boat since I was a little kid. I got pictures of my mom on here pregnant. Caught my first marlin on here when I was five, I was hooked. I love all the people I meet on the charters. Some people are so amazing, people from all over the world. I love that pure stoke on people's faces, catching something bigger than them, it just never gets old. And just catching a blue marlin, and just it's nothing compares the fight, the thrill, and it's never the same thing always. It's always a different day out there. A passion and livelihood shared between generations, connected by a family heirloom made of mahogany and epoxy resin. 